Welcome to this video tutorial, which is a presentation and a general overview of the chess application. So let's start from the beginning and say that you have just downloaded the file from the website. Here it is. So I just open the containing the downloading folder. You the files you have downloaded is a zip file which is compressed. It contains the chess folder that you can unzip anywhere you want. For example, on your desktop. Once the file is unzipped, once the chess folder is unzipped, you can do whatever you want with it. For example, create a shortcut. Here it is. Chess folder contains different files. There are four Excel files, which are the application files. Chess user is the main application. It is this application that you use to enter and type protocols and to see the structural summary. This application, Chess user, also generates data in order to compute interrater reliability using Chess Kappa. It also generates data needed to create or to build up a database when using Chess DB. Once a database is created, you can use Chess Norms Editor to edit norms. There are also three PDF files that you might find useful. Chess Map is a simplified representation of the enhanced structural summary provided by Chess, so you can get used or familiarized more easily with this presentation. DB structure presents the principle of the construction of the database. There is also a list of the valid codes that can be used with Chess. And this file is an example of a handwritten scan protocol. The last three files are chess files, which means that they are protocol files that can be loaded in the chess main application, chess user. So let's get started and launch the main application file, chess user. First thing you need to know is that uh, any time you want to use chess, you have to activate the macros. As long as the macros are deactivated, the program cannot work properly. As you can see, nothing happens here. Well, let's slow the protocol in order to ease the presentation. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, there are several tabs which are different spreadsheets uh, you can switch to. The first one is ID and contains identification information about the client, test information, file information, etc. The second one is where you can type the verbatim. This is not necessary. You can use a scan protocol, scan handwritten protocol if you want, but if you want to type uh, verbatim, you can do it here. In the code spreadsheet, you can enter RCS codes in a typical fashion. 
you can see here a grey area. The grey area provides automatic results. Good human representation and PHL are uh, computed automatically. The value of uh, the Z score is also computed automatically from the Z type. You can see here little green signs. They indicate the validity of the codes used in a particular response. For example, if I enter an invalid determinant code here for this response, this red sign indicates that this determinant is for this response is invalid. The content is invalid either because it is not possible for a response not to have a content. So if I enter a valid content code here, the con this little green side appears. You can also score supplementary scales, mutuality of autonomy from 1 to 7, Rorschach oral dependency, and aggressive content. You can see here several numbers, but we are going to talk about that later. You can also double code a protocol if you want to and store the double coding in the same file. You can use the double code spreadsheet to do so. It is arranged exactly in the same way that the code spreadsheet, but you cannot score uh, supplementary scales for now. Once a protocol is coded and double coded, you can compare the two scorings quite easily using the compare spreadsheet. You can see here, for example, that in the third response, um, the two judges disagreed concerning form quality. In response 7, they disagreed concerning the determinants. Here in response 10, uh, you can see that the two judges um, agreed on MP but disagreed on the other uh, determinants. Otherwise, chess menu allows you to switch between different display modes. The multiple windows display mode is quite helpful to compare a coding and a double coding. Here is the verbatim and you can see the different responses. Here is the coding with the different responses, the double coding and the comparisons. So you can look for these agreements, here is one, and see what is happening concerning this particular response, response 3. first coder considered form quality to be unusual, while the second one considered it as ordinary. As you can see, form quality tables are available in chess. We wanted to ease and to standardize the scoring of form quality. In order to do so, we have scored every item from the reference list of the workbook from the comprehensive system for their content and give them an identification number that we call FQI. In addition, we have added two filtering options to ease the search for relevant items. For example, if you are looking for wall and human representation, In the default location of card 1, just enter this filtering option and ask for the results. Here are the relevant items. You can make very specific researches if you want to. For example, in response 2, the client answered une araignée, which is a spider. 
in the world location. So you can look for this very specific item in the table. It exists and its identification number is 242. One important improvement of the standardization of the FQ table is that identification numbers are the same in every language. For example, here spider in the English table is 242. And in the French table, the corresponding item, araignée, is also uh, numbered 242. This procedure allows to compare form quality in uh, across country in a quite simple way. Because once you have found the relevant item you are looking for, you can score it in the code spreadsheet. For example, here in response to I can type here for the FQI 242. Here there is only one object in this response, but there could be several objects and I could score the different objects of the response. If you score uh, your protocols for FQ items, um, FQ frequencies will be computed automatically when you are going to build up your database. Once you have finished scoring a protocol, you can take a look at the enhanced structure call summary. Well, it is quite different from the typical structure call summary. We wanted to increase the amount of information available in the summary and to ease its reading. The most important features we have added are interpretation keys displayed here, interpretation strategies here, detail concerning the blends in the affect cluster, stress blend, triple blend, color shading blend, etc. and details concerning FU minus homogeneity. For example, in this protocol contains 11 FU minus responses, 10 of them are associated with pure F determinants, 7 are associated with color cards, and 6 are associated with the three first cards. There are many rules, combination, and cutoff scores that are very hard to remember uh, and to know by heart in the comprehensive system. Um, so we wanted to ease the reading of the structural summary, but we didn't want to provide any automatic interpretation neither. So um, we decided to display some keywords just as reminder to help the reading of the structural summary. For example, the cut of values for the interpretation of the number of plan depends on EB style and lambda. So it is quite hard to remember what these values are and to read or to understand the meaning of a particular value for a particular protocol. Well, in this case, considering EB and lambda, the number of plan is low. In the same kind of way, human contents are meant to assess some kind of interest for the others, but it should be evaluated according to the number of responses and EB style. And in this case, this, pro this human contents represent a low interest in others. In the same kind of way, adjusted D um, is to be evaluated very caref carefully according to EA, EB, Lambda, and adjusted ES. Some keywords are provided here, and in this case, Adjusted T shouldn't be considered valid at all, and uh, the interpretation of the wall control cluster should be abandoned. Please note that in the upper left corner you have an option to compute for. You can switch, you can compute the enhanced critical summary for the scoring, but also for the double scoring, and see what differences it uh, implies.
Let's go back to the single window mode. When you are finished with a protocol, obviously you can save it. The best way to proceed here is to store every file um, in the chess directory. This includes the chess file for the protocols, but also the PDF files that you might have scanned for handwritten protocol or uh, location sheets, for example. This is not really necessary. You could save your files in other directories, but um, to store every file in the chess directory eases in very substantial way the management of several protocols. We are going to see in another video, in the next tutorial, how to manage several protocols and most particularly how to compute interrater reliability and kappa coefficients and how to uh, create database. Thank you for your attention and we do hope that you have found this tutorial helpful.